previously on Sailing Adrift. Our inverter is now working, which means our Starlink is now working. We ended up getting incredibly lucky with that situation. To solve the problem, we took apart our inverter and let it dry out while we met some new friends. We went on a few hikes and played Jenga, then rode back to the boat, finally got the courage to reassemble it, and now... It worked! <laughs> it worked! Today we move. We're heading out of Agua Verde. We will miss it. And we're gonna go up to uh, a place called Honeymoon Cove on a little island just outside of Laredo. That's the plan. Woo! Okay, you wanna get on the bow and we can raise the anchor? Before you knew it, we were out of there and apparently motoring along at warp speed. Bye, Aqua Verde. We love you. See you soon. Really do love this place. I'd totally come back. It's almost oh, we... like our, I don't know, like our first place. And yeah, there's some nostalgia already. Yes, yeah, you always remember your first. What I meant by first was that this place was really the first time and place we'd experience what we thought cruising life was all about. We had the clear water, the beautiful beaches, caught fish, and met some other cruisers doing exactly the same thing. This anchorage represented everything we had been working towards over the last five years of our refit. So hell yeah, we're coming back. Anyway, now that we're underway, Chris is gearing up to start trolling. All right, baby, you gonna catch us a fish today? Let's hope so. Maybe a Dorado for the first time. We've got a uh, dueling setup out today. We're gonna test out a couple of different lures. This one really isn't meant to go as fast as we are probably gonna end up going because we have 0.8 knots of wind today, right on the nose. So we're gonna be motoring and I'm fine with that. I'll sail when I can, but this one has a little tracer thing and a little skipper in the water thing. It's a whole setup. And on the other side, we have our trusty cedar plug lure. Yeah, I got a lot of faith in that one. Oh, there we go. We'll see which one hooks us a fish. See how that like splashes on the surface? That's on purpose. Okay. We'll see if it works. I've been told that engine noise makes you less likely to catch a fish and engine noise makes you more likely to catch a fish. Yeah, I All heard the that big too. fishing trawlers obviously use engines, so mm -hmm. we'll just wait and see. Okay, I'm gonna check on things inside. Will you hand me my water through the pass-through when you get down there? I stayed up on deck and monitored our lines, while Chris went down to check on things below. Now headed for Honeymoon Cove, to meet up with our new buddy boat friends on Beluga. They got an early start this morning, but we're just behind them. This little day hop was pretty relaxing and fun for the two of us. Maybe a little too much fun. Parking. That's all you get. Darn, I was really looking forward to seeing some more of that sweet torque action. Anyway, speaking of sweet action... Quick, pretend like you're doing something. Yeah. Are you, though? Yeah, I'm checking our lures for seaweed, Kelly. Oh. We can't have seaweed on them. No fish yet, only vegetables. We just kept motoring on. The winds have increased to two knots on our beam with gusts of three. Look at that. If it goes any higher, we're gonna have to put out the sails. It's gotta go a fair bit higher. I might put up the main just to stabilize. It would be great for that, for sure. We're passing Isla Maserat right over here. What do you think about that, Kelly? Our little skipper is back there doing its thing. Hasn't caught a fish yet, so can't be that good at it, I guess. It'll happen though. While we were hopeful, we sadly did not catch any fish today or put up the sails. 
On our way to Honeymoon Cove, we decided to make a brief pit stop in Puerto Escondido. Mostly just to check it out, because it seems so exclusive. But we also never want to pass up the opportunity to top off our fuel tanks and our water supply. I should also mention that Puerto Escondido literally translates to hidden port, and that became very apparent as we started our approach. Also, we definitely didn't do ourselves any favors in securing our new deck ornaments. Yeah, maybe we should find a different spot for these paddle boards. They definitely obscure the visibility from the pilot house. Yeah, we basically gave ourselves blinders. Yep. This is crazy. The place is called Puerto Escondido, which literally translates to a hidden port. And it is aptly named because it looks like we're headed right for a cliff. That's the entrance and you can see all the boats in the marina in the background. Okay, we're ready to go to the fuel dock. Got everything set up, all my deck ornaments out. I'll turn this corner and tie up. We successfully arrived at the dock. Now it's time to top off our jugs and tanks. Start with the water. Just hand me that hose. As we fill up our flush water tank, I grab our TDS meter to test for bad stuff before filling up our fresh water tank. It's uh, reverse osmosis, so it should be good, but we can definitely do that. Let's uh, get the ball rolling on some diesel. By far the highest prices I've seen in the whole sea. Now, before you freak out, remember this is in pesos, not US dollars. But this is also the price per liter, not gallon like the US. So 27.85 is actually only 157, but this is the amount for a liter, not a gallon. So if you do all the math, we're paying 5.95 US dollars per gallon. Anyway, back to our water quality control. How does it look, Captain? Okay. Good news, we're within acceptable drinking water range. This place is known for being pretty pricey, probably because it's the only port for miles, but it's also got some nice amenities. Got a couple rooftop bars, or one rooftop and one down here. Yeah, I can see why this place is the most expensive. In the Sea of Cortez, it's pretty new. I think the little tienda here is pretty well stocked, so let's go take a look. Hmm. Damn, dude. Pretty well appointed. This tienda also had some convenient grocery store items for purchase and prepared deli foods, like these delicious sandwiches. Oh. I don't know what's in them. They're both the same? Tuna, yeah. Nice. Tuna and vegetables. Got our groceries, got some sandwiches. Mm. Back to the boat. As we depart from the harbor, I gather up and stow our fenders. We won't need these where we're headed. I am piloting us out of here. Really, uh, still tasting a delicious tuna sandwich. I don't know what she put in there, but it was like a tuna salad, but it had like corn and a bit of spicy. And it was on toasted bread, but the tuna salad was super like cold. That was really good. Yeah, I never thought we'd be rating deli sandwiches, but those bad boys were like five stars for sure. A great little lunch stop. Spent a buttload on fuel while we were here, but we're back to full. As far as water goes uh, and they didn't charge us for that we got rid of some garbage and they didn't charge us for that so kudos for the those two things nice little marina man really attractive we are headed back out potentially across the bay but beluga is there already and they are reporting mass amounts of bees which is what we we're worried about so we might have to pull an audible but for now i'm gonna get us out of this here hidden port Despite the bee warning, we decided to join our friends and anchor down in Honeymoon Cove. Uh, we're on a little cove called Divorce Beach, separate from Honeymoon Beach, but it's like our own private cove, so it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna go out for a paddle and um, trying to avoid the bees. There are quite a few bees, so we're all netted up, but uh, safe, drop the hook, we are locked in. That's what we got today. I like these day hops. It's like you get here, you can actually experience the place and um, see the surroundings. It's, it's really cool. A few moments later. We're at our boat at dusk. Well, it's more of like sunset, so it's not too dark yet. And there are bees everywhere! They're attacking! They're coming from all directions 
And it's like at the end of the night, right before they go to bed, they have to get super aggressive. As you can see, we've got a net over this. See them? Down at the bottom. All the bees. Anyway, other than that, this place is pretty great. But there are a lot of bees. Did I mention that? <laughs> and if you don't know, what they're after is water. Fresh water. They're always worse on these islands. Kelly likes to tease them by playing in the sink when they're here. They can smell water from like two miles away. So I want to fish. It's fi it's prime fishing time, Kelly. This is not I got my time bait out. Yeah, I gotta wait. I gotta wait till they leave. Anyway, we're here and we really like it. Mm -hmm. Agua Verde was a little better, but we like it here too. Soon we will be fishing. Then we gotta figure out what we're gonna do for dinner. That's that's what we're up to. Okay. Exciting times. Cast it. That was a good 20 yard cast. I'm getting quite good. <laughs> this place was really amazing once the bees went to bed. We enjoyed a calming sunset while fishing. The air was warm but very enjoyable. And this was one of those rare occasions where we both felt really relaxed. Chris wasn't having a whole lot of luck, but he kept fishing until he caught something. You caught a puffer fish? Dude. I don't think they bite you, but their spines are like mm. poisonous, right? Chris caught the porcupine of the sea. That's, what do I do? I don't know. I don't even know if I'd want to touch it with gloves. We, we might need to look this up, like what you do when you catch a puffer fish. Uh, maybe if I get a pair of pliers, I can grab them and like get it off. I feel like if I, if I had like a, like a long handled pair of pliers, I could get them out of its face and drop them in. Here. Look at his big old bug eyes. I think this is what Furbies are modeled after. Looks like a little Furby. Google how to get the hook out of a puffer fish. Are you messing with me? Okay. Chris is now on the phone with his parents. My parents both told me if you touch a puffer fish, you could die. Okay. All right, fine. I'll cut them loose. Give me some scissors, Cal. All right, I'm gonna cut them loose. Unfortunately, there was no hope for this little guy. Yeah, that's a good alternative to death. Not like we have much in the way of first aid out here. The next morning. It's getting worse. Kelly is hiding for her life. I feel like this is a good stay at home day. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about going for a hike. But I'm I don't know if that's a thing. Look what outside is like. Can you believe it, Kelly? This place is beautiful, though. True. It is really tempting to go outside, and there's a nice hike that doesn't seem too treacherous. <sighs> I wonder if it will be nice. You're better than that. Uh, uh, uh. Hopefully, we can put this behind us. Anyway, they were getting in. So we went painter's tape all the way around. I stuffed some napkins around the cord. It seems to be pretty uh, secure at this point. Yeah, we're holding strong here on Drifter. We decided to bite the bullet and rave the bees. This morning's adventure, we're gonna go on a bit of a hike here in Honeymoon Cove. Kelly's ready, she's getting us some water. Her back's nice and sunburnt because of yesterday. Yes, it is. We've got our castle mostly secured <laughs> it's still errant bees get in here somehow it's magic but it should be fine while we're gone we're gonna head out step one get to the beach done our friends from beluga gave us a sweet ride over now for the hiking part there were some trails sprawling across the island we just sort of headed up and out one of them not really sure what to expect, but we packed plenty of water and sunblock. We hiked up to the highest point we could reach and took a look around. It was a really warm day, so the breeze felt amazing. This is a dive spot. That's weird, there's concrete. Someone must be putting in a sign. Do not dive. Oh, that's some wind. Mm -hmm. 
We hiked all around, up and down. Ah, uh, it's nothing, I caught one last night. It's pretty cool down here. Heading back. After exploring everything, I've seen it all. Do go that way? Or this way? That way? Or this way? We all decided to go this way, and somehow we made it back to where we started. Our friends graciously gave us a ride back to Drifter, where we were greeted by... Yep, you guessed it. Yeah, let get a little scared. Oh, I'm dealing with about 35 or 40 that are just like right outside my protection and trying to get in, trying desperately to get in. It's pretty bad. Yeah, good thing we did a good job taping all these edges, but if one of them fails and like mass bees start crawling in, I'm gonna scream like a sissy and jump in the ocean. And it's weird how they like just mass around the one that got chopped in half by the fan outside. Fun fact, if you kill a bee, it will release an alarm scent that will attract other bees from the colony. This guy got chopped in half, that guy got chopped in half, this one over here got chopped in half. Mutilated bug guts everywhere. This one's dragging a carcass. We finally got smart and turned off our fresh air intake fan from above the hatch. But by then, it was too late. We had promised to make our friends dinner tonight, which was becoming quite difficult now that the bees had infiltrated our security measures and are now swarming about the galley. This is cooking with bees. Jesus Christ, let me tell you, I am soaked in sweat. This macaroni and cheese was the worst idea ever. We should have waited until it got dark. Yeah. We came up with a short-term solution by sucking the invaders up with our shop vac. Leave before you're dead. That was kind of working until it wasn't. What the fuck? What? They're coming in through the crack like by like a ton. Something, we get the tape. Okay. Uh, no, seriously, Kel, like it's... We grabbed what we could, which didn't include our unfinished mac and cheese dinner. All right, we've made it onto the back deck. Why don't you wait back here? I'll get my paddle board and then go around and free yours. This is not funny. This is so not funny. Holy crap. All right, here you go. I'll hand it to you over here. Okay, perfect. Chris hands me my tether so I can wrangle my board in and get out of here. We made it to shore alive, and now we're indulging in dessert first. Dinner had clearly been postponed as it is currently trapped inside Drifter. We'll just have to wait out the army of bees. You know what I like to do when it's 95 out? <laughs> <laughs> it's cooled down quite a bit. Oh yeah, it feels pretty. At least the smugglers chased the bees away, now we can have some dessert before dinner. Yeah. We should build a fire on our boat. <laughs> oh yeah. Look oh, at you got that bubbling. That looks good. Do you have smell-o-vision? Because you should. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> we very much enjoyed our marshmallows, but we aren't about to give up on our mac and cheese. All right, bees, it's bedtime. Go home. It appeared the coast was clear. I can't see any from here. Our hero paddled out to check our hostage situation and hopefully finish up dinner for us. Chris went back to the boat to go check on the bee situation. It appears to be better, but not over. But he's inside, so that's a good sign. Get in there. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know you slaved for this. Hard fought. <laughs> Dig in. <sighs> Tune in next week as we make our incredible escape. So, the game plan this morning is to do an emergency exit. Are you done? I can go back to work now. Captain distraction. 
Who, Mom? I think this is what Furbies are modeled after. It's all over, man. Yeah. It's all over but the crying.